let's make it clear. You wanna make Space Invaders. Let me show you what I can teach you. You have X-Wing, you have TIE Fighters, and you have a lot of explosions, and you can kill all of them and create a lot of explosions through that. Doesn't it sound like exactly what you wanna do? Hello there, my name is Fancy, and that's everything for introduction, you don't need anything else, right? You know what you are going to do. But if you want to download the project I have made in this tutorial, you can, it's in the description, as well as links to all the assets that I have used, so... Let's get to creating, invading and spacing. Alright then, first thing we will do is to launch our project. You probably have the same version as I do, which is 4.24. Or uh, you can download it right here, uh, but if you have newer version, it should work as well. Let's launch it. Okay, that will take you to this Unreal Project Browser. And we are going to create game and let's use Side Scroller template. Okay, click on next and you can leave everything as it is. You are going to use starter content, make sure it's with starter content, blueprints, we are going to make game in blueprints and you can set it to mobile but it's not necessarily. I would recommend you to leave it on desktop and console. And let's name our project. So I will call it space underscore invaders. Okay, let's create that project. but. Before that we need to do one very important thing, and that's to gently press the like button, so if you will, thank you mate. Let's create it. Before we get to our project, we need to get us some assets. And because the usual Space Invaders is kinda classy and pixely, we are going to make Star Wars version. And for that we will need some ships. Our main ships will be this beautiful X-Wing. And a link on both of these ships that I'm going to use will be in the description, of course, as well as a whole project, which you can download if you will. And for that, you can, of course, try to find your own assets if you want to simply go to Sketchfab and find what you want. Make sure that it's downloadable. Right, this ix link is, so I will download it and in FBX format. Uh, make sure that you are downloading in FBX or OBJ. The next asset I am going to have is TIE Fighter, like this one. Uh, make sure that this one is quite a low poly, 2k triangles is pretty cool. But And it's in OBJ I believe, yep. Uh, we are going to have a lot of these ships on the screen at the same time and if it had like 20k triangles it could possibly be really heavy on your system and that's what we definitely don't want. Okay, I have downloaded both of them and put them into separate folders. And right at the same time I have this project. So let's create here a new folder, right click a new folder and call it Assets. Okay, double click on it and simply take both of these folders and put them here. Okay, make sure that you are importing it right as it is. Uh, and that should create same folders in your Unreal Engine project. Let's move this a little bit, we are not going to need it. And let's start with TIE Fighter because it's a little bit harder to create. You can see that someone separated it into a few different meshes, but we will need only this first one. So let's rename it and call it just TIE and delete everything else. Okay, delete it and delete these two actually and make sure that only this one works, so let's leave it there. It's 72, so we are going to delete all the other ones. Okay, and open the last one, and delete that, put it on the corner of your screen, and let's, let's have fun with these textures. So what we are going to do is to put here this color, which will be connected to base color. Uh, this is kind of a voluntary part. If uh, you are using different assets, it will have a little bit different setting. And uh, next is spectacular. So let's connect spectacular map. Apply it. And let's open our 3D asset. Uh, you can see the shaders are still complaining. Uh, complaining, yeah, they are definitely complaining. But more importantly, they are compiling. And that means they are not anymore. But that means that uh, your materials are just getting ready for you to see them. Uh, that's something that's happening a lot in Unreal. Okay, our model seems to look 
quite nice, quite Star Warsy, which is exactly what we are going for. So let's look at our X-Wing. That's uh, you can see that X-Wing is done much better from the 3D modeler. So let's open just that material and connect all these maps that are there. And I will speed up this part for you. Okay. Last thing, last uh, map that you may have a bit of a trouble with is this emission. Uh, you don't really necessarily need to connect it because we won't see part of mesh that uh, actually has that commission in our emission in our game. But uh, just for future reference, you, if you want to have strong enough emission, so and you can really see it, you need to add the multiply node, multiply, and this connects to our emission. And set it to about 50. That's something you need to test in your game. You know what, 150. Let's not be shady. Okay, now as our assets are game ready. So let's see what we can do with our game. Right now you can see that you can walk around and that's pretty much it. You can jump, walk around, but we have completely different character than we would like to. So let's make sure that we put there our X-Wing. Let's click on this side scroll character and right here on world outliner, let's click on edit the blueprint. But firstly, let's get rid of this. Dismiss it and you can update projects. It takes just a quick moment. Uh, maybe you don't have these problems with your project if you are using the newer version. Okay, and it's right here. In my case, it's usually shown minimized for some reason. I actually don't know why. In your case, hopefully it's not it. So what we are going to do is to look at our blueprint and for that we will take our mesh, we will add here mesh, click on add component and add mesh, static mesh and let's set our static mesh to that X-Wing, X-Wing right here and our beautiful X-Wing is right there. The problem is that our skeleton is sort of in way. So let's click on him and reset it to default. Okay, wonderful. Put our skeletal mesh under capsule. Let's just make sure that it's under there. It should be, but just to be sure. And rotate it as you need. About 90 degrees and set it to... Set it like that. Compile and click on play. And you can see that it sort of doesn't work. There is several things that are wrong, but let's switch, let's uh, fix them one by one. Firstly, it's rotated wrongly, so let's open it and try it on like that. See if oh, it's much better. That's how we want to see him. So compile and click on our capsule and actually make uh, capsule radius bigger because we want it to cover almost whole our model. Okay, compile and see if it works now. Well, it's much better, but still not necessarily what we are looking for, right? Okay, open it and ta -da. we see that it's kind of weirdly rotating when you have it, when you are playing it. So for that, you need to go to our character movement and disable it right there. You can see character movement rotation setting and orient rotation to movement. Let's disable it. Now if you click on compile, your character is wonderfully moving. Okay, that looks fine. And is, uh, another thing we are going to do is to click on that camera, side view camera and set, uh, no, actually click on spring arm and set it to much bigger distance. 1500 for now and you can see how your X-Wing is moving. If you press spacebar or arrow up or W it will jump which is something we will get rid of eventually. Okay but uh, next thing we are going to do is to get ready our th uh, TIE fighters. So let's delete all this because before that before our TIE fighters we need to get rid of one more thing. And that's if I disable the floor, disable means delete, of course, it will fall down. Yep. So what we can do with it is to simply get rid of gravity. Oh, gravity. 
and then you need to go to character movement, grab it and look at our character movement general setting, gravity scale. You can see it's set to 2, that's not what we want, we want 1, this would be actually normal gravity but we are going for 0 because we don't want any gravity, oh come on wait, compile it and see if it works. And it works beautifully. But there is one thing that happened because of that. If you just gently press D, as gently as you press the like button, <laughs> you can see that it's still moving. It's like it is on ice or in the air, which is I mean, which is actually is, but that's not how we want it to look like in, because that's not how it was in Space Invaders. So let's click on our camera and do something with it. Again, look at our character movement and let's, oh no, firstly we need to go up and set default land movement mode to flying, okay, and let's, let's scroll it down and try to find character movement flying, and right there you can, uh, you can adju adjust max fly speed, that's how fast you will be able to move once you press the button on left or right, but the most important is to set this braking declaration, that's a declare. I can't read it, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce it, <laughs> my bad. Anyway, what we are going to do with it is uh, to set it as, m as high as possible. For example, let's go with 1000. It's basically friction in the air, how, f how fast it will stop after you stop pressing that button. Okay, click on play and you can see that it's almost immediately. If I have set it to a little bit higher, for example, let's add 1 0, one zero. That's a little bit more than a little bit, but a little bit. <laughs> you can see that it stops immediately. So be, uh, if I were you, I would just find a perfect value that's great for how you imagine your game to have. I will set it to about 900, because I want a little bit of movement after I stop pressing that. I think that it kind of adds realism. Great, okay. Next thing we are going to do is to add the movement of our TIE Fighters. Let's uh, get back where we were, that was here in our side blueprint. We have created our assets folder and let's create a new folder which will be called blue... Oh, we... I'm sorry, we already have blueprints folder, so let's open it. Create new blueprint class and set it to actor and call it enemy. open it and let's add here another component and that will be our mesh again static mesh compile and set it to our tie fighter we have already named it as tie so let's just put it here and I oh I can't really see it it's quite small okay well we got that model for free so that is nothing we can complain about right but still it should have been done better. <laughs> Sorry about that. But it's for free, so still great. Okay, let's look at it and definitely scale it up. Uh, for that, look at our scale in transform, lock this lock, lock lock, and set it to 50. That's too much, way too much. Let's set it to 10. Compile and put it in our game. And as you can see, it's way too much. So let's click on it again and set it to about 6 would be cool and let's rotate it hopefully it's in this direction direction and it should it looks pretty much fine uh, now when I, I am holding right button right button on my mouse and moving with VAHSD and trying to position it right above our X-Wing. Okay, click on play and it seems like it's it works. It's just standing there, but that's that's fine. That's what we want. Okay. Click on our enemy and now we will set up our movement. So for that, let's start with event begin play. I was right here in viewport and clicked on event graph and right there I will create move component 2. And component we are moving is default scene root because later we will add a lot of different meshes into this uh, 
into this uh, blueprint. So we we want to move all of them at the same time. For, so for that we are as our component that will be moved, setting this default scene root. So let's put it here. And now we need to set target relative location. That's where he will actually move to. And for that we will take it from our default scene root and we will get a relative location which will tell us where it is right now set hit to plus vector plus vector and connect it right here and in y axis let's set it to 50. so what it will do when the game will start it will move our component which means hold this blueprint into its position plus 500 units so let's see what it will do it should take Oh, it already did it. It just was quite fast, so we can't really see it. Uh, to be able to really see it, we will add here delay, just a short one. 0 0.2 is fine, and it was it, this way of setting up movement will also help us create that lagging lagging movement that you can see in original Space Invader. So let's and from this complete it after this delay, let's put it back here, just like that. That's a little trick that. I have found quite useful when working with blueprints. If you are wondering why I am doing this, why I am doing these points, it's just to have it looking better, more organized, and you can create them just by double clicking on it and deleting them by uh, selecting them and pressing delete on your keyboard. Okay, let's compile it and see what it does. And you can see that it's doing as we as we want it. That's brilliant, guys. We've got our player and our enemy that's going shortly after out of our screen. Okay, we're going to solve it right now. So let's delete this. We are going to create another blueprint and that blueprint class will be again actor. And that actor, let's call him collision. Jeez, I hope it's written with table at all. We will see. <laughs> collision underscore L like left okay have it uh, add component and as component we will add box collision okay and one more thing we will add also cube just we have some visual representation of it move it a little bit back so our collision is more forward okay let's scale it up we are going to scale it along okay firstly let's have it pretty much the same size and now let's click on our box because it is, uh, our cube is set under our box. So when we move our cube and uh, uh, our box, anything will happen, uh, will, which will happen to our box, will happen as well to our cube. So let's scale it up and a little bit too wide as well. Okay, and put it into our game. Okay, rotate it. Okay, now it is set. So when our enemy will get in contact with it it will actually trigger this collision and for what that will do will be set up right now and as i'm seeing we can actually make it a little bit bigger like that okay click on play and that pretty much works so now we need to set it so it actually does something because right now it's just floating there not doing actually anything uh, we need to click on our enemy edit enemy and create here variable right here left and that variable will be set to change side compile and set it to public that's just clicking on this i or you can set it right here instance editable okay and now if you go to our collision left we will click on our box, scroll right down here and set it on component back in overlap. Click on it and now we are going to cast to our enemy. Set object to other actor and as enemy we will set our, how did we call it? Yeah, change side and set it to true. Compile and set it like that. Again, compile, it will be compiling a lot. 
okay go to our enemy and now we will set here a branch so let me quickly show you how to do it from D we will delete this one yeah I know it was pretty nice before but let's change it and we will add here branch and as condition for that branch will be our change side and now remember that when we set this uh, in the time where our enemy will collision with this it will touch it it will set our change sides to true so if it's oh come on what is going on some bug okay ignore that so if it is true we want it to change its size side it change its way where it's moving but if it's false we will actually do exactly what it was doing before that means moving in this direction so let's set it but if it's actually true it was changed let's take this code copy it by clicking ctrl c then pressing ctrl v right here and connect it to but what we will do is to change it to minus 50. compile again and from the from here we will go actually to this branch where it will again decide if it will change its movement direction okay try to make it as organized as possible okay this is not organized <laughs> let's not waste the time compile it and see if it works click on play and let it move it's moving 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 and now it should collide and it's changing way it's going the other way around congratulations guys we are almost there well not but we are going there <laughs> okay now the problem is that there is nothing like that on the other side so we will simply do it click on our collision l duplicate it and call it collision right open it and the only thing we will change is to set it untrue because we have set up our code like that okay let's make sure it's about the same size about the same way and click on play and now i will just speed it up for you but you can already see for yourself that it's going back and forward back and forward okay i can see that it's actually moving a little bit more than i want so i will open it and simply move that collision forward or actually i will move that cube backwards so it shouldn't have been a problem okay i don't really think we need to test it so you can do it for yourself if you wish and now the last thing in movement parts of this is we need to set it so our enemy is going down and for that we will first need to clear our co clean our code a little bit so let's take this move component 2 that's first going to left right click on it and collapse it to macro what it basically did is to clean our code a little bit if you double click on it all this code is hidden right here and you just need to rename it so let's click on it right to left in the macro and rename it moving underscore left you don't need to name it same way as with underscore and all it's just the way i am naming all my stuff and i find it work pretty well okay the next thing is to take this and do absolutely same stuff collapse it to macro and call it moving underscore right so now we need to set up our moving down so let's double click on our moving in one of these macro and copy this code let's go back to event graph and paste it here so now what we need to do is to change this axis so we were going on the y axis and need, let's set it to z z should be that one that will tell you go down or up and we want down so let's set it to minus 50 and collapse it to macro again and call it going down oh we are moving in before so it would be weird to have it in going so let's call it moving down and you can see that you don't have any pins that simply means you need to double click on it and set it like this simply put it into input and output complete 
compile, which I mean. And now we need to set it when it should be happening. For that we need to go back to our collisions and open them, both of them. Okay, so firstly in our enemy let's create new variable and that will be going down. I'm just, oh no, just going down. And again let's make it public variable. Okay, so what we will do is to put it right here before our moving left actually and even before that, oh come on, and before that let's put here branch. Okay, let's put here branch, I've, I've got it a little bit messy so let's just, oh come on. Let's delete it by clicking on it and click uh, pressing control and see what we can do with it. Okay, from here we are going to our branch, branch or what, however you want to call it. And when it's uh, true, you will uh, go to moving down and then to moving left. And if it's false, you will go straight to moving left. And when it begins play, you will go straight here. You actually don't need to. Oh, you know, you know what? It actually doesn't matter. You can have it, uh, have it here if it's easier for you like that. It really doesn't matter because right there we will set up our condition, and that condition will be going down. So when going down will be true, it will firstly move down and then continue and if it will be false which should be most of the time it will just continue right here so we need to set up same thing right here even in moving right and let's put it before moving right so let's move it all okay double click on it and if it's false let's move right if it's right firstly move down and put it all like that and now Let's set it in our collisions. So what we will do is to take our enemy from it and set going down. And okay. Firstly, set it to true. But then wait for a really short time. 0.2 seconds is default. Let's leave it there and set it again to untrue because we don't want it to go down all the time and target must be set to our enemy of course okay compile and let's copy all that and move it into our collision right where it should be okay sorry I had to cut it because I have made a mistake but I have already fixed it so let's get to it when you are in your collision left and right let's open both of them you need to set the delay before setting going down back to false to 0 0.25. 0 0.2 is not enough to let all that walking and moving cycle complete. So let's set it to 0 0.5, which is what I have done. And now I can show you that it works beautifully again. And it's really moving on the side and then going down. Okay, now we need to solve another problem. That's our camera, because as you can see, it's moving with us, which is not how it looks like in original Space Invader. And that's a little bit complicated in Unreal, but we won't have a problem with it. Uh, let's go to our search classes right here in modes and create camera. That will create new camera actor, which is facing right other way than I want and rotate it. Okay, and move it down, which means back. <laughs> okay, now let's put it, let's say about here. Okay, it looks nice. <laughs> now we need to go to our side scroll character and set it that when the game starts, it will actually takes that camera which we have just created and set it to our as our main camera. So let's go to search and create event begin play, which means that's an event that happens when you start the game. And from that we will create get all actors classes, get all 
actors of classes, there, there it was, and that class select to camera actor. Camera actor. And from that we need to get a copy. And now the funny part, let's move it all down. Right click on it and we need to get our player character. Now we need to actually get our player controller and from that we will set a camera view, set a view target with a blend. And right there from our get let's connect it to new view target and our arrow to arrow, you know, you know how it works. If you wish to have that movement uh, a little bit uh, to take some time, you can set it right here into blend time. So let's compile it and see if it works. Click on play and it seems like it works beautifully. I can move and play, which is just nice. Uh, you can see that we have had some black spaces on the sides. That's all right because our camera is set to it. So let's click on our camera and you can adjust our field of view and all this funny stuff and aspect ratio. Um, you can also disable this uh, constraint aspect ratio, which if you will do, it will simply uh, fulfill the screen as it is your game screen, but that's not what I'm going for. And now let's constrain, then click constrain again and set it to one. If you look at it, I can see my game looking terribly weird, but that's what I'm going for. We are going for old school. Okay, let's move it a little bit closer and move that camera. So our, okay, delete everything else. Oh, no, not that camera, that camera. And move it so our collisions are just on sides. You can always check it by clicking on that camera a little bit more. Okay, a little bit more again. Now double click on it, okay, on both of them, which means pressing shift and clicking on both of these actors and scale it up. Okay, now if you look from your camera, Oh no, I have I have also selected my camera, which messed it up pretty badly. So deselect your camera by click, uh, pressing Ctrl and clicking on it and scale it up. Okay, and let's prepare our game screen. So let's delete side scroller, delete this network player start and sky sphere live there. Click on both of these walls, uh, all three of them, not both, and scale it all up. So now when you play, it actually looks like game screen. And what we can do is to scale our actors up so they take more space. Okay, that looks nice. Move it down. And now there are shadows. So let's get rid of those shadows, right? So click on skylight and no, actually we need to click on our light source. Uh, right in the world outline there you have lighting folder where we have all the lighting stuff. So, lighting stuff, you know, lighting. <laughs> so click on lighting source and somewhere here should be cast shadow. So let's disable it and save our game. Always try to save your game as often as possible. You can uh, use shortcut control S. Now it looks quite nice. You should be proud on yourself. Not everyone can do this. <laughs> okay, okay, we are pretty good there. So what we are going to do now is to create some shots because shots will be shot. Let's go to blueprint and create a new blueprint class, which will be actor. And let's call it shot friendly because we need, will need to create two kinds of shots. Okay, create component and Let's create cylinder. Oh, no, actually, no, we are not going to create cylinder. We are going to create code. Okay, compile it or name it however you want. For example, cone. It doesn't matter if you won't use it, to be honest. You won't use its name. And we need to add movement. So add projectile movement. And let's see what it does. We will need to set up initial speed and maximum speed. That's how fast your uh, 
pr your projectile will move. Maximum speed set to however you want, just have it high. And per initial speed, let's set to 1000. We will see what it will do. So, okay, let's put it here in our game and see what it does. Which direc direction it will go, etc. And it went down, which is not really what we are going for. So let's go back into our projectile movement and look at our velocity. It's set to X and to 1, but that's probably not the reason it went down. It's gravity, because gravity again. Of course. Compile and set gravity projectile gravity scale to 0. So well, we are not going to work with gravity. Too. And for some reason it is still going where I wouldn't really expect it. What's going on? Wait a minute it up oh of course because we have set up bad direction right now it's going like forward to you in this case it means forward to you like that not forward to me i know i know it's weird i'm going to set it right now <laughs> okay we don't want to work with x axis we want to work with z axis and set it to one okay compile and play and it seems like it does just what we want put it down Okay, play, and it's going up and up to the future. Wonderful. So it seems like it works. Now let's make it. Let's try to make it look a little bit more good. Good. It looks pretty terrible. Like it's cone. What? What do we even expect? Okay. Let's go back to our side scroller PP. Go to assets. Right click and create here material. Material will be called M underscroll. Let's have it blue. Open it, and I will right there explain why it will. Be, it is called blue. Right click, create constant, and constant free vector. Apply. And that constant set its color to blue. That's why it is called blue. You know, colors. <laughs> That's not blue. Okay, great. Take it from here and let's set again multiply because as I have said, you need to have multiply when you are using uh, emissions, otherwise it looks pretty bad. And set it to 200, you know, we are going crazy like that. That's gonna be, that's gonna be wild. <laughs> okay, connect it to emission color, emissive color, emission color is in Blender. Oh, maybe I have overdone it. And let's go to our blueprint, shot friendly. And in our cone, let's set the uh, material to our emission blue and see how it looks like. Oh, I think that I have really overdone it. <laughs> oh no, it actually looks pretty good. Cool. <laughs> okay. That looks cool. And we are not done yet, you know. If you can have it colorful, you can have it more colorful and have a lot of stars in shots. So let's add here emitter. No, we, it's actually called particle system here. We are going to add particles. Sweet. Compile it and add here. Steel limit, smoke, fire, sparks. Yes, look at it. Look at it, how beautiful it is. Okay. And you can see what it does. And actually, we will set it a little bit more down behind it. So you, it should have some smoke and it looks like there is a lot of particles from behind it when it's flying. Compile and play. Okay, that looks nice. That looks really nice. Now let's try to make sure that we can actually shoot the shot right now. It's just in game. So from here, let's delete it. Click on our X-Wing side scroller, side scroller character and get rid of this jump. That's terrible. I don't want to be jumping. Uh, if you wonder what are these uh, stuff, you know, columns, you can use them to, for example, let's select all this, press C, and which will create it and call it camera change. It's just to let you know what you are actually doing with your code. For example, when you are, when there is walking multiple people or, or actually only one people, uh, people, only one people, <laughs> only one human because we all forgot. But now. We need to create our shot. So 
let's take it from this action. We have already mapped it. So when you press spacebar or W or arrow up, it will uh, it will execute this action, which we will use right there. We just won't use jump. We will spawn actor from class, and that class will be set to shot underscore friendly. Okay, set it right here as well. And now we need to set uh, spawn transform. That's why it doesn't work. Um, and I am pretty stupid because you need to disable it. I'm sorry about that. Go to our viewport, add component, and that component will be called arrow. Okay, move it up somewhere around here, compile, and take that arrow right here. And from here set, I believe, world location. So get world transfer okay let's use only location click on this and split struct spin and connect it to spawn transform location and now you can connect it then everything should be beautiful and you should be able to shoot okay let's try it click on play and it works guys it works beautifully you can see how I'm shooting this mother freaking. I'm not going to swear here, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and but I'm afraid that these yes, these shots are quite missing our die. So we will have to move it a little bit. But it should be simple. Let's go. Let's be precise. We can use our location, which is X. Yes, and it's set to. Let's just copy this X put it here and set it now it should go still true but it should be hitting it at least yeah it is wonderful because we haven't set up anything that will actually do anything you know when it collides that's what we are going to do now click on our enemy edit it and we need to add here collision so let's create collision box collision and scale it down as hell because it's huge look at it move it up Let's rename it all firstly. A static mesh will be called die underscore zero one. Collision will be called call underscore zero one. Okay, compile. And now let's cast, cl uh, click on our collision, set it to on component back and overlap, and cast to our shot friendly. When it begins to overlap with our shot, which is our other actor, we need to set it up so it will it will destroy component. Oh come on, what is what's going on? Destroy a component, and that component will be set to Taiwan. And other component that will be destroyed will be destroy a component. And that will be set to die uh, collision 01. Because it would still be there and it would have it would cause our problems. Okay. And what's even more interesting, we will create there some explosion. Because everyone loves explosion. So we will Spawn emitter at location, and that location will be taken from our die, which is well, will be this model right there, and get world location, get world location, and put it right here. And that emitter will be explosion. Let's see if it works. Compile. Okay, I just need to hit it, my bad. And it works. Look at it. You can destroy your enemy. Destroy your enemies. That's what we are going for. Okay, let's be calm. You can destroy it, but uh, your sh shoot, your shot, or bullet, whatever you are shooting, is still there. That's what we are going to take care of right now. Okay, and to destroy it is actually really simple. So let's take it from our cast to shot friendly move it and create here destroy actor look at it so it will simply destroy that actor and as target of that destroy node will be set our cast to short friendly great compile 
close it and click on play. Now if I try to shut it, it explodes. Congratulations guys, we have just made it explode. <laughs> okay, now let's create few more TIE Fighters. So let's simply press, click on this, select both of these, TIE01 and Collision01 and copy it and it should follows our naming conventions, which it seems like it does. That's brilliant. And let's do it for three times. I meant few times, I don't know why I said three. <laughs> okay, and let's create five of them. For example, like this, if you look at your game, you can see they are moving there. They should change its move and they are looking at you, trying to destroy you. But you can see that you can't destroy most of them. You can destroy this one, yep. But that's like the only one you can destroy, so... That's what we are going to do something about. Unfortunately, that is uh, not really a good way how to solve it. And I'm going to show it right now to you. What you will do is to select all this after our on component begin overlap and compile it on collapse it to macro and call it that or something like that. New macro rename that. Okay, and now we need to make few adjustments. Open it and from here our object needs to work. You know, we, we will rename it actually, execute, leave it it is, and object can actually stay like this, but from here you need to connect it right here. And because it is same mesh right here with this tie, we need to connect it as well to target. And the target let's rename to our mesh, okay, click enter, and let's try to make it look a little bit more organized and another and last thing we need to set is our destroy component collision so let's take it from here and connect uh, oh actually what am I doing here yep you need to this I'm sorry you need to delete this die and from our collision let's connect it to here again and this target will be called Collision. Collision. That spelling will kill me once. And again, let's try to make it a D double. Okay, now what it did in our event graph is exactly this. We don't have anything connected, so we have a bunch of errors. So for that, we need to take our tie one and connect it to mesh. Then you can then take our Collision, oh, coll oh no, what did I do? Our collision one and connect it to collision compile. And now, unfortunately, what you need to do is to do this for every single one of these ships. Trust me, this, this is still faster way. You can actually do it and, and, and apply it all of these models to every single one of these nodes. This, uh, you, in this ca case, you can do it only once. So let's quickly do it. I will show it in number two and you can do rest. Okay, die. Oh no, actually click on collision two, on back in overlap. Let's take our dead, copy it right there. Connect our arrow, connect our other actor. Mesh set to tie zero two and collision set to collision zero two. And now that's what you need to do for every single mesh. I will just speed it up. Okay, and now let's see if it all works. Click on play and try to destroy one, destroy two, destroy a few of them. And honestly, this is starting to look pretty brilliant. If you have done everything as I have, which I'm pretty sure you did because you are pretty smart if you are watching this tutorial, wink wink, <laughs> you sh it should work voila, just like this. One more thing we will set up is to let those enemies actually shoot at us to make it a little bit more interesting. So for that we will go back to our assets and create and copy this emission, duplicate it and call it emission red because red is always evil, right? Disney told you that if you have watched new Star Wars, which I, I fortunately have. So let's just change it all to red, compile. 
close it, look at our blueprints again, create short friendly array, duplicate it and call it shot. I'm gonna be funny, I will call it shot unfriendly. Oh, look how badass he looks. That's definitely what he thinks about himself. And let's set it to like, disable this particle system because we would have some trouble with it. And rotate it all, compile, and what's most important, set it to. Oh, where, where is. Oh, you need to click on our pro your projectile movement and set it to minus one. Put it in games, so just to make sure that it works. It works. It just doesn't do anything, but it works. What? Oh, let's delete it now, and you can move these a little bit more up. Okay. So now we need to set it so our projectiles will be create uh, will be randomly shot by these enemies, by these tie fighters. And for that, we will actually move all this down, and I will command it for you guys. Let's call it that of enemies and let's disable these I'm not going to use them probably yes what we are going to do is to take our event begin play and create here sequence because that is one more thing we want him to do when our game starts and that's to spawn actor from glass that actor will be of course shot our unfriendly and funny thing is now to set it to our transform player transform for that we will take all these dice you know what no, no let's start with first one and we will spawn array out here make array of course sorry about that you know and connect all these ties into it. This is a little trick that I will find quite useful. Only five because programmers are weird and are using zero. And from there we will get a copy. Okay. And as that copy we will actually get random. Okay, nope. Random integer. Maximum will be, oh, that should work. A maximum set, set to six, I believe. And from here, let's get world transform. But again, let's split it, split structure pin again here as well, and set it to on the location. Uh, after it will happen, let's give it a delay in about 0 0.8 seconds and from there it will do it again compile and play see if it works and it seems like it works you can see that it randomly spawns shots from your enemies now they are actually capable of killing you oh no they are not capable of killing you but you can see what it does you better not get shot but it seems like they are shooting it quite a lot, so I'm going to adjust that time to 1.5, just to be survivable. You can do it as you wish, and I will actually make it smaller. I don't really like how big it is on the screen. You can set it however you want, I trust your judgement. Okay, that looks nice. Look at it. It's coming close to kill you. And you can slowly destroy all of them. So now let's set it so that it can actually destroy you. Uh, shot you unfriendly. <laughs> let's open shot unfriendly and create here collision. Call it box collision. Let's put it somewhere in the middle. Oh, a little bit. So more you can have it without this dimension it's not a problem go to event graph and um, of course first day let's click on on component plugin overlap cast to our side scroller character which is that's how is our character called because we have used blueprint that was here before 
we will do it a little bit more complicated so I can teach you one more stuff. Edit our site scroller and create function. Open it right here and call it dead. And for that I will destroy no no firstly I will spawn emitter at location because you deserve pretty nice explosion when you die as well. Explosion location let's set to our Static mesh, get world location, put it here, compile, and now it will destroy actor. No, it will, we will destroy only component. It would make it pretty messy if we destroyed actor. And that uh, component will be our static mesh, so it will actually only look like it is destroyed. We, are, we will be lying to a player, but it's not. Doesn't matter. He won't know it, unless you tell him. Okay. I look pretty evil with this red light. I'm um, sorry. I just started looking at myself, and you know, kind of, you know. <laughs> okay. Now back in our shot unfriendly. Let's call that function which I've just created. That's a main plus of functions. You can call them from different blueprints. So I will call it, and I am going to call it that. So let's see if it works. Pile and I will let myself be shot like this and I have exploded and there was explosion. There was there were two explosions for some weird reason. Yep, you probably need to wait a little bit uh, before you destroy that mesh. Because you know what, I will do it differently so we don't need to wait. I will simply use this arrow. Okay, compile. That should work. Yep, that works. And and to make it look a little bit better, let's click at our side scroll character and set it to minus vector minus vector and z to minus. Uh, 100 let's say so now when I will be shot it should explode much better okay I have added one little improvement I have simply added to this that do once node so it doesn't have so many errors create here do once complete it put it here and pretend like you don't see that first error that will show you don't really need to take care of it okay but now we need to tell player what to do right when he is dead sort of so we will print here a message, print a string, and that string will be, you can actually create a hat element and all this funny stuff, but that's uh, not in this tutorial actually. I will set it to press R to restart. Press R to restart, compile it, play, okay. What the hell has happened? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't connect it, this complete, it's to our spawn emitter. My bad. And you can see that on the left it has written press R to restart, but nothing happens when you do it. Simply because we haven't set it up. So, what we will do is to go back to our event graph on our side scroll character, press here, right here, keyboard. R and for that we will get a current level name and we will and load a level. No, I'm sorry, we will open level. This was always kind of messy. And simply connect it like here. It will transcribe it as it needs. And now every time you press R, it will restart your level you can see now so you can die you will be dying all over there is bug but honestly I don't think there is really need to solve it so I will press R and I can play that is another bug that I have noticed and that's when you destroy these uh, some of these meshes uh, the game will still try to shoot out of them but he can't because it's destroyed and you can see that these little shots are in the back screen that's a bug that we can possibly fix but it would take a lot of time and I don't wanna really tell you how to do it because it would as I said take a lot of time and this video is already long so you know I will 
show you simple way how to manage bugs and then simply to hide them. So I will move this. It's cheeky as hell, but trust me, this will save your life. If your bug doesn't take too much of performance, you can simply hide it. Now you can see that it's all it's still trying to shoot from this, but you can see it. That's how you solve bugs. Okay, now we are going for some time, but we are not done yet. Now we need to create obstructs, so uh, it actually won't kill you that fast. For that we will need some geomet geometry. Go to geometry, meshes, and let's use this 1m cube. Before that you need to go to edit, plugins, and go into built-in, and right here apex. Make sure that this is enabled, in my case it isn't, so I will do it. And you can see that I need to restart uh, Unreal Editor. So first I will make sure that everything is saved and restart it. Save selected. Trust me, you want to save it. Okay, now it should be enabled. So let's close it. And oh, okay, let's go back to our meshes and right click on it. And it should have new stuff. I don't know how you call it. And that should be create destructible mesh. Click on it. Now it's just need to load our texture, your textures and shaders, and it actually doesn't do anything. But that's what we are going to fix right now. Trust me, you will love it. I loved this when I discovered what Unreal can do. Enable impact damage. That's first thing you need to do. And cell side counts. You know what? Let's make it a little destroyable, like a really destroyable. So let's set it to 40. This is overkill as hell. You probably shouldn't do it, but it will be fun. Trust me. And fracture mesh. Okay, now you can see it's preview depth 0 and 1, and if you go with this, you can see what it does. It will go crazy. Every time anything touches this, it will explode just like that. That's what we want. Yes, explosion. Again. Update project files for some reason works now. Okay, save it and create another blueprint. Side scroll BP, blueprints, right click, and blueprint class, and actor. Let's scroll it abstract. Open it. Add component, and it should be destroyable. Destructible, okay. Pilot, and only destructible which we have is this cube. Compile, and I can see it there for some reason. Excuse me. Uh, it's a little bit buggy, that happens. Click on it again. Viewport, and it's already there. Okay, now let's see what it will do. I will put it right here. Okay, maybe let it make it look a little bit bigger. Okay. And let's make sure that it's on the same... Uh, a location as is our X-Wing and all the other stuff. So let's move it and put it right here. I will show you what it does. Now, if you are under it and shoot at it, it will look just like this. It will be destroyed and do all the funny stuff. But what's and it will be also destroyable by your enemy shots, which is so cool. Damn, I love it. You can see it is actually even reacting with uh, your ship. If you shoot it, it will fall on your ship and some can even stay there. Okay, but now we need to make sure that it actually stops our shots. So for that we will add here another collision. Box collision, compile it. Okay, we can't really see it, so let's scale it up a little bit like this. Yeah, that seems about right. Compile it. And, and set it to on component begin overlap. Okay, and we are going to cast to our shot friendly, and right after that, shot unfriendly. Okay, we can. Sh no, we need to differentiate it. We can. Yeah, of course, we need to create a sequ sequence and set it like this. And connect our objects to other actor. Okay, compile it. 
you can try to have it organized okay doesn't matter it won't be organized and set it to destroy actor okay play and see if it works wonderful it destroyed our actor and it destroyed our actor so let's make sure that it destroys even our enemy's actor and just to make it a little bit more probable that it will happen i will create few of them Doo -doo -doo. that's almost like in a real space invader that's what we have actually right now almost and you can see that it's exactly what it does The problem which we have just seen is that there is still that collision it stays there so how to solve it is to simply click on that obstruct and another thing we need to do is to destroy our collision and that will be done simply by destroying component and that component will be box exactly copy paste put it here and it should work as a charm okay that didn't really work out we will probably need to make them a little bit wider and i will do it in a blueprint because like that it should happen in uh, all of the instances at the same time okay compile and see what it does Oh, it was in the bad direction. That's not what I want. Viewport, one more time. Let's select both of these and okay, scale them. And you can see that it works quite nice. A collision is gone and it can shoot and kill you and you can kill that. Also, there is uh, almost a bug, I wouldn't necessarily call it a bug, but these uh, sharp nails of it can actually move your ship down. So if you want to uh, make sure that it doesn't happen, I will give you it as homework, actually, homework. You can set, uh, you can put there a delay and you can put there a delay and destroy that mesh or that component or actor. I have basically told you how to do that, so it's up to you. Or you can leave it like that as I have. Okay, that's pretty much it. We have basically done game. I am actually pretty proud of us. Look at that. Jesus. Damn, we are cool. You can also, if you think that we are too overpowered and can shoot so mu too much in at the same time, you can just create there a branch and play with it a little bit so it you have a limit how fast you can shoot but that's something you I'm pretty sure you can do right now anyway I have a discord in the description I would definitely recommend you to uh, join it firstly because I really want to see your project like I'm not, not joking uh, not lying not joking a little bit lying but uh, if you haven't uh, pushed that like button gently it would really help me out with uh, algorithm as you know probably but an unright comment about anything it's up to you uh, as i said in description is a discord tell me something about your game show me if you have done your game like that and that's about it fancy is done fancy is going out fancy is out